With over 35 years as a sign writer, Melvin Passmore has applied his brush to all manner of businesses, from buses and boats to industrial and high profile work. Mel is well placed to pass on his knowledge, covering tools and materials, brush technique, pouncing, stenciling, chalkboards and gold leaf gilding. Mel provides a perfect introduction to the craft. Afternoon guys, welcome to the channel. Scout sign right here again. Okay, so we're going to start to have a look at uh, glass gilding. Uh, I know really we should go into transfer gilding next, uh, but I know a lot of you have shown a lot of interest in glass gilding, so I think we'll do that next. This will probably be three videos, three or four videos long. Uh, it's quite intricate. Um, right, to start off with, what's the material we're going to use? It's going to be gold leaf. Do me a favour. <coughs> It is not this. That's transfer leaf. It's not that. I've seen guys do a black outline, let it dry, come back, fill it in with clear varnish, and then gild it with this. Don't look good. That's for working on boards. Um, Loose leaf comes in a book form. Like so. There's our loose leaf. Very delicate. Solid, as pure as you can get. No additives. 23 and three quarter karat gold leaf. You can get standard or extra thick. I tend to use extra thick. Um, I, I find I get a better gild with it. But every gild will be different. So the standard or extra thick. Um, it's hand beaten, hand cut. Um, the owner of Rights of Lynn, or Stone Houses, if you're looking for, for it in the UK, the owner um, used to be a gold beater himself. When you go on Rights of Lynn's website, or Stone Houses, it's the same company, but it's, some people call it Stone Houses, some people call it Rights of Lynn. Go down to Gilded Materials, you'll find there's, there's silver leaf, platinum leaf, um, variegated leaf, there's all different types of leaf um, all the other types of leaf are quite difficult to use because they're a bit heavier um, so but the only thing I can say is get a book of each have a practice you know if it's just out of pure interest or you're doing it might be a piece of art on the back of glass you might be doing a back glass painting where you want to incorporate some gold leaf try the different types of gold leaf have a look at the uh, the website see all the different types there's some beautiful types in there um, have a look, and as I say, I've used I think, most of them, if not all of them. Um, but all the other leaves are, are quite quite heavy to use. So, gold leaf. Um, the first thing you'll come up against is, I don't know, let's call it a solicitor. Years ago, solicitors weren't really allowed to advertise in the UK, I don't know if it's like in the States. They could only have maximum of three-inch letter. Uh, and 99.9% .9 of them wanted gold leaf because it was a, it was a status symbol. Um, and it does look gorgeous. It looks right. Um, so, let's say for argument's sake, a client rings. And he's got a window. Six foot by three foot. Go and have a chat with him. Um, see what he's after. The way I'd normally go about it is I'd come back, measure the window, come back and do a couple of sketches for him on the bench. Um, I might do the name, let's call it Pots and Care. Pots and Care and Arch with slices underneath. It depends. 
whatever the client wants, you know, he's going to give you some idea. He might have a logo. You don't know. It could be anything. You know, what I like is not what everybody likes. He might say, well, that's email. That was bloody awful. It might be traditional, but I don't like it. So it, it, it's up to the client. So then you've got to come back to the studio. Now, I'll always, as you've seen me doing posters, that's how I do my master copy for a gold leaf job. I will set my, my, my paper down, draw it up, and then I will sign write it freehand. There's a reason for that, because then when I come to work back to front on the glass, when I'm putting my black on, or my red, or whatever colour, uh, the outlines of the drop shade is going to be, whatever, wherever the paint the colour is, um, I know the shape of the letters they've, they've registered here, and I know if I've gone a little bit, as I've sign written it, and I've put it on the, uh, the, the master copy on the outside, go inside and start sign writing it, I know it was a little bit light on me, A eh, on this stroke, so I might put a bit of weight on it there, or the ochre of them with a bit more weight down here, I knew that when I was sign writing it, so I've got the feel of the job, if you understand what I'm saying, it, it's in here, stuck in here and I know what I'm looking for but I would imagine that majority nowadays um, with the advent of computers and plotters and vinyl cutters and printers um, you would get you can go to your local sign shop and get them once you've got the final artwork designed you might have something like this drawn up You know, that might be the job. So what they, this is a job I'm doing at present, actually. Uh, and what they want is all what you see is black is going to be gold. And all what you see in white will be clear glass. Not a colour, clear glass. Okay. Um, when I... There's another job I'm just doing a design. I'm just designing this one up at the moment first. Um, young lady's initials, C, B. Um, these are all going to be different colours. I think it's it's black, blue, and uh, black, red, and green. The outline and then the shade. And then it'll all be gilded. Uh, I'm not sure about the scrolls yet. I'm playing around with that. Uh, these will be jewels set into the gold letter. Um, that's another point I'll come on to later on. Um, just to let you know what I'm talking about. A jewel is one of these come in various colours. See that? And when it's put on the glass with the UV glue, so you don't see the glue, it's flat on the back, it's got a sheer face. So that is stuck on the glass. And when you look at it from the other side, you see it looks like it looks like a jewel. I don't need to see it. You can see all the different chamfers like cut glass. They look gorgeous. Get them in different colours. And that's going on where you saw on the decorative letter in there. Okay, that, that's just taking the, uh, the job a little bit further. <clears throat> but they do look gorgeous when they're fitted and the light catches them. You've got all the refractions of the light against the gold leaf. <clears throat> okay, so, <clears throat> we decided the guy wants it, the client wants it in gold leaf. Uh, you've okayed the drawing. You've been to one of your mates that's got a sign shop. You've either had, um, you've probably had something like this printed up. Um, this is printed on clear. Okay. So I will then, because it's on clear, I can just peel this off. Literally, it's on clear. And stick it on the outside of the glass. Obviously, wherever it's going to go, you know, centre it, whatever you're going to do. Whatever the artwork is, that just gets stuck on the outside of the glass. That stays on until you've finished, as far as I'm concerned. Um, process being, firstly and foremost, the glass has got to be spotless. 
Um, I've tended to find a few problems in the past where if it's a door or a window and someone's been cleaning it with Mr. Sheen for the last 10 years, the silicon out the cleaning problems get into the glass. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen it. I've cleaned lettering done with oil paint on the back of glass off. A razor blade, white spirit, cleaned it all off. Don't know if you've ever noticed. You will always see an imprint of the letter in the glass. Always. It's the linseed oil. Or it's the oil in the paint that eats into the glass. And it'll leave a mark. That tells you the glass is actually, it's, you can't say porous, but it will take on other products. Glass does expand and contract, so it's not a stat static material um so if i go to a, now i don't know so i've turned up to the job now i use whiting and methylated spirits to clean the glass this is whiting um it's basically it's like a talcum powder there it is That, I just damp, damp a rag with meths, and then polish the buggery out of the glass. Uh, dip it, pardon, damp your rag with glass, dip it in that, and then polish the buggery out of the glass. It's a slight cutting compound, so it takes any grease off, any marks. Once you give it a good polish, one final wipe over with meths. There shouldn't be a mark on that glass. It should be absolutely bloody spotless imperative um when i'm fitting um and i'm doing anything on the back of it then if i've got to do anything on the back i'll have a pair of white cotton gloves on there's nothing worse than having a fingerprint in the middle of a letter and you've just gilded it you go outside you have a look and you think oh bloody hell that grease mark it's standard like sort of so imperative once you've cleaned the glass you know Try not to touch it, or as little as possible. Don't touch it where you're going to work, where your element, wherever your element's going to be, don't touch it. Um, so, you've cleaned your glass, meths and whiting. Um, and as I've said, I don't know, but some one might have been cleaning that glass for the last five years. Twice a day, or once a day, or twice a week, with Mr Sheen. Full of silicon. When I come to sign write it, number one, the paint that you sign writing with will cis. Because that silicon is coming out of it. I've found this on a couple of occasions, and at the end of the day, I've asked them to change the glass. I'm not going to mess about it, I'm not going to spend ages and waste a lot of time and a lot of money. And I've said, do us a favour for the price of a piece of glass and the price, the, the amount of work that goes into this job. Get a new window or get, get the glass in the door changed. It's not the end of the world. It's not, it doesn't cost a fortune. Um, it saves you wasting your time messing about. It also affects the gill. When you come to gill, you'll struggle. You'll find when you're putting your water size on and you're trying to get a nice even float, it won't. It has little circles in it, it runs around it all. You can't gild it. Or you'll struggle like hell. Um... So they're just a couple of tips, a couple of hints. Um, as I say, this is quite an in-depth subject, so it's, it's it'll go on for a while. Um, okay. This one here, as I say, the, what you see is black will be gold, and what you see is white will be clear glass. So... What I will do is I will gild all this in one lump. Just gild it all in one lump. All the way around. And then on the back of the glass, on the gold, I will paint around the letter to trap the gold. Yeah, so I'll paint all around these letters to trap the gold. And then when 
I clean off, it just cleans it off where the lettering should be. And it leaves that clean glass. Once I've got my sketch on the outside of the door, this is a door I'm doing, um, and I've done all the gilding in that area, sometimes, not often, it depends on the light, depends where you're working, but sometimes you might struggle when you look through your window, you might struggle to see, because you've gilded all this now, you might struggle to see this, where you're going to paint around the edge of the letter. So, there's a neat little trick, which I will now show you. Um, you guys out there that are quite knowledgeable will probably know it. Um, piece of poster paper, just normal poster paper. Okay. White spirit or turp substitute, whatever. Could be a bit cleaner and so could the rag. But hey ho, there we go. I know it'll still work. Okay, you can see that now, yeah, so you can see your drawing, and that will dry out, that'll just disappear, that'll dry out in time, but it gives you time to draw around this with, where are we, there is she, What we call a pounce wheel. No, no, we. A pounce wheel. Little wheel, lots of different loads of little spikes on the end. So you can then literally. Now, what I recommend is put. Don't try and do it straight on your bench. You're going to really push hard. A piece of interlining paper on the bench first, underneath your poster paper. So, what I do is, first of all, I'll draw around the lettering, draw around all the text, trace it through. Then I'll take my drawing out, because I'm going to use that again, and put that on the window. Put them over there at the right. So you've now got your poster paper straight on top of some interlining paper and literally just go around your text. Just literally go around your text like so. And what you're doing is you're just putting perforations in the paper. Um, when you finish, you've been around all your text, let it dry, fold it over. Now what I tend to do is get a piece of um, 320 sandpaper and just knock the burrs off. Because sometimes they'll, as you're pressing on it to pounce, the holes will get, the paper will fill itself in again. So just rub the burrs off and you're rubbing the, making the holes clean basically. Uh, so you've been around all your drawing. Uh, now this is only two reasons to do this so we've got that on the outside of the glass yeah so it's like that and that's what you can see looking through the window and you've gilded all this all this black and once it's finished then what you're going to do is paint around it let it dry and then clean it off and you'll be left with clean glass if you can't see your master copy on the outside, because you've gilded all this now, don't get it's covered in gold. Can't see it too good. You use your sketch, your pound sketch. 
You put that over it on the inside of the glass, pounce it with chalk, white chalk, and you'll see it leave a little dotted outline around the lettering. And then you just follow that, dot to dot. Okay, that's that. Um, so what I'm going to show you now is something that I know a few of you are going to think straight away. Can I use a stencil on glass for gilding? If it's just going to be paint, it's not a problem. Not a problem. But if you're doing something like this, where are we? Come here, camera. Okay, this is that one we showed you before. That's the outline we've put on the glass. I've put the master copy on the outside, then I've gone on the inside after cleaning the cleaning process. I've outlined it with black and put a drop shade on it. Now you could put a stencil on the inside of the glass, reverse cut and weed it out and just leave obviously where you want your paint, your black. Doesn't work, trust me, doesn't work. What happens is you put your stencil on and you paint over your stencil and bugger off. And come back the next day, take your stencil off when it's dry and take the middle of the A's out and all the rest of it. And then you gild it, the inside of the lettering. Where the stencil has been, when you take the stencil off, the paint is at a right angle to the glass. When you take your stencil off, it's at a right angle. Gold will not go to a right angle. So, when you, after you've gilded it, when you come to burnish the excess gold off with cotton wool, it will. It's not gilded up to the edge of the letter, up to the edge of the black, the outline, or up to the edge of the paint, because it's a right angle. It will not gild, so you end up with a dirty edge all the way around your lettering. No good. When you sign write it, the paint flows. And leaves like a, a, a camber, so the gold goes to it. It's fine. It's fine. It, it works. It works perfect. The if like we had a job. Oh, a, a, a good few years back, and there were about twelve lines of text. Oh, excuse me for one sec. Sorry about that, guys. As I was saying, we had. Um, Numerous windows to do for a client, um, a lot of them, all of the same on. Uh, and he didn't want any outline around the text, he just wanted gold text, no outline. Fine. So you just gild a block, you literally gild a block of gold where the text going. The only way you can do it to get it really sharp, sound daft, silk screen it upright. So we use a very, very heavy paint. So we gilded the lump on the window. We had a silk screen made. We put it up onto the glass. We squeegeed down, took the, took the silk screen off and it trapped the gold, let it dry. When we went and cleaned all the excess gold off, it just trapped the gold under the text where we wanted it. And you've got no outline around it. The text was too small to do by hand. Physically, you couldn't do it, it was impossible. Um, so I think we've covered the drawing, um, how you go about it, draw it up yourself, as I say, I draw my own up, or you can get it done on a plotter, uh, obviously a lot quicker on a plotter, um, just gives you that master copy to put on the outside of the glass to work to. Um, so what I'm going to do, the next video, we've got a piece of glass ready. We will clean the glass, we will set the design on the front of the glass and we will outline it in the workshop because they're, they're, obviously this, it's not the normal sign writers that you use either. Um, you use a mat, uh, I use a, basically a poster colour. If you try to use gloss, it'll just fall off. Um, so we use a matte poster colour with a touch of varnish in it, just a touch. Uh, 
that grabs the glass. It's far superior. It won't come off while you're gilding. Because you've got to gild it maybe two or three times. And then you've got to scald it as well. Um, but we'll go into all that on the next video. Okay, guys. hope it was interesting. Um, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now. Hi, guys. Just a quick word. To keep making these videos for you at no charge, we're asking if you could jump on board with us and help the charity that I'm heavily involved with. It would be great if you could dig deep and make a donation using the link below. Any donation, no matter what the size, makes a massive difference to Paw Prince, a small local wildlife rescue centre who are really struggling at the moment. We really appreciate any amount. Every penny counts for a small charity like this. If this isn't for you, that's fine. Can you enjoy the rest of my videos? See you soon, guys.